With all-wheel drive and a massive 360 brake horsepower punch, the A45 AMG is the giant killer that followers of Mercedes-Benz had long been waiting for. If you want a devastatingly quick hatchback that can do it all, this is where you should start your search. Just how far can you take a hot hatch in terms of price, performance, traction, quality? It's an interesting question, and here perhaps is the answer the Mercedes A45 AMG. There's never been a Mercedes quite like this one. The Stuttgart brand's AMG performance division has never previously built a hot hatch and never previously breathed upon engines as small as four cylinders in size. Historically, it's never seriously dabbled with the brand's most compact A-Class model either, a car about as sporty as a couch potato in its first two generations of life, but very different now. The Mark III model had a more dynamic DNA from the very start. Here's the ultimate expression of what it can offer, launched here in mid-2013 and aimed at a far younger breed of customer from the AMG Norm. An audience likely to be impressed by the fact that beneath the sculpted bonnet lies a hand-built 360 brake horsepower 2 litre turbo unit billed as the world's most powerful four-cylinder engine in series production. With 450 newton metres of torque transmitted to the tarmac via a formatic four-wheel drive system, it lays down a challenge that will be tough for the opposition to answer. Mercedes then has redefined what a hot hatch should be. Let's put this one to the test. So, what exactly might the world's most powerful hot hatch be like to drive? First impressions are certainly encouraging. Proper race style instruments, a carbon fibre trim dash, and thank goodness the awful column mounted auto gear shifter you'll find on other A-Class models, replaced by a proper chrome trimmed AMG shifter down where it should be, falling nicely to hand at the bottom of the centre console. What's important though is what lies ahead beneath the bonnet. You can't help firing this Mercedes up with a pleasurable thrill of anticipation for what's on offer here is quite a feat of engineering. After all, if you want to buy a car with an engine that provides more horsepower per litre than this A45 model's 2-litre unit does, you'll have to find nearly £900,000 for the McLaren P1 hypercar. Time to put it all to the test. In the first few hundred yards, there's nothing especially notable to report, apart from the fact that you're going very quickly indeed. Switch the AMG drive unit into M for manual or S for sport, then use the race start feature in the AMG Speedshift DCT 7-speed dual clutch sports transmission and the 62 mile an hour barrier can be demolished in just 4.6 seconds, nearly half a second faster than obvious rivals like the BMW M135i, the Audi S3 and the Volkswagen Golf R. As the revs build, so do the oral fireworks, nearly all of them from behind you rather than from the engine up front, especially if you've specified an optional sports exhaust that creates a wonderful bark during full bore upshifts. BMW and Porsche provide richer music from beneath the bonnet, but it's not as addictive or as efficient. So while a BMW M135i needs three litres, two turbos and six cylinders to generate only 315 brake horsepower, this Mercedes simply makes cleverer use of the humble 1991cc four-cylinder power plant found in the brand's ordinary A250 model. Who would have guessed that this engine could be tuned to deliver as much as 360 brake horsepower and 450 newton metres of torque, more than a Porsche 911 Carrera S. The reasons why lie in the detail, so there are two radiators instead of one, a larger intercooler and a high-tech variable vane turbocharger, plus the exhaust system is different and features a loud mode. Away from the engine bay, uh, there are Meteor fixed-rate dampers and bigger anti-roll bars. 
the suspension gets firmer springing too, despite which the ride is actually actually quite acceptable. Better, in fact, to my mind than that of the standard A-Class. That's provided you don't go and ruin it by specifying the larger 19-inch wheels. And you're not unwise enough to pay extra for the rock-hard AMG performance suspension setup, to my mind, suitable only for track use. As surprising as the ride is the steering. It's firmer bushings offering uh, much better feedback. It'll be a revelation to those like me used to the disconnected feel. Uh, it was like a PlayStation of older AMG models. And the whole recipe is properly finished off with reassuringly huge brakes, as well as a wider track and grippy Gumball Dunlop Sport Max tires rubber that isn't spun away uselessly through tight corners or during slippery weather. An AMG 4MATIC all-wheel drive system works in front-wheel drive most of the time, but when needed, directs up to 50% of torque to the rear wheels to ensure a playful bias to the car's handling and guarantee a rapid getaway. And there's a curved dynamic assist system that lightly breaks the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turning and ensuring that all the power gets onto the tarmac. Does it all work? Yes. Will it satisfy absolutely all members of the Red Mist Brigade? Probably not. If you're the kind of person who likes to steer a car with a throttle and want a machine that's fun but occasionally a little frightening, then this one probably won't suit. Uh, though you can switch the ESP stability control into sport handling mode or off completely if you really want to satisfy your wild side. Broadly though, this is a car that barrels into corners with the chief aim of coming out from them as quickly and efficiently as possible. Like the old Audi RS3, wet or dry, it just grips and goes. And if there's quicker point-to-point -point country road choice on sale in this country today, then I can't for the moment think what it might be. The styling updates that differentiate the A45 AMG are actually quite subtle. Too subtle, perhaps, bearing in mind that there's already an AMG Sport trim level for ordinary A-Class models that ramps the aggression up several notches. So, you've got to know what you're looking for in recognising this car. Let me point out some of the highlights, like the twin blade radiator grille and the cross strut in the front apron, both painted in matte titanium grey, or the black flicks that surround the large cooling air intakes at the sides. They're needed too for quite an engine lies under here. No, it's not fashioned alongside the big V8s created at AMG's Affalterbach headquarters, but like them, it is still hand-built, in tune with the company's one-man, one-engine philosophy on a dedicated production line, this one in Mercedes' Kalida engine plant. How do I know that? Well, because the signature of the engine fitter can be found on this beautiful little plaque at the side of the engine. A lovely touch. And there are plenty of others as you move towards the rear of the car, like the 18-inch twin-spoke light alloy wheels, which, if you pay extra, can feature bright red brake calipers. Uh, and then there are the AMG side sill panels with their matte titanium grey inserts. Moving towards the rear, past lovely little details like these tiny rear wheel arch spoilers. You'll find more matte titanium grey on the rear apron with its highlighted air outlet side openings and uh, diffuser insert. The sports exhaust system's two square chrome plated tailpipes are the final things that drivers of lesser cars will see as you flash past. Step across the lovely illuminated AMG door sill panels to take a seat inside and you're bound to like uh, Recaro style sports seats that are trimmed in a combination of Artico man-made leather and Dynamica microfiber. Or at least they are in the standard model.
this particular car has been optioned up with real hide. But it says much for the quality of the Artico fabric that I struggled to notice the difference when first I got inside. Another classy touch sees these five SLS style air vents finished in black and red. Plus there's a set of red seat belts, which as any fool knows, are worth a second a lap. Don't agree? Then swapping them for the usual black items is a no cost option. Other stuff I like includes the fact that what looks like metal really is. Not so good are the hard plastics down by the centre armrest and the need for a fiddly electronic handbrake. The three spoke leather trim flat bottomed AMG steering wheel with its red contrasting top stitching is one I'd want to specify with the lovely Alcantara trim and cool to the touch silver gear shift paddles that I have here. Through it, you glimpse an equally purposeful instrument cluster with two main chrome trimmed dials featuring red needles and separated by a central colour display featuring a race timer mode. Anything the colour display can't tell you can probably be found on what looks like an iPad sitting on the upper part of the centre console, but which is in fact an integrated infotainment system able to sync seamlessly with most smartphones. Now its placement looks like a bit of an afterthought, but the screen itself works very effectively, uh, even if, as here, you paid extra to have all the command online uh, media features integrated into it. As for space in the back, well, the curve of the rear side windows and the amount that the rear wheel arches intrude into the door openings means that getting in isn't quite as easy as it would be in, say, a Golf R or an Audi S3 Sportback. Once installed inside, though, even a couple of six-footers should be reasonably comfortable thanks to these scalloped cutouts in the back of the front seats. I wouldn't, though, put too much store in Mercedes' claim that this is a five-seater, a statement which seems to be at odds with the way that the cabin back here has been styled very much to suggest accommodation for two. Three children will probably be fine, though. And the boot? Well, once you've managed to lift the heavy tailgate, you'll find that uh, the stylized rear light clusters do necessitate a rather narrow opening, but once you get your stuff inside, you'll find 341 litres with the rear seats up, or 1,157 litres with them folded. That's a little less than most rivals offer, but not by enough to matter very much. It is a pity, though, that the rear seats don't fold completely flat. Still on the plus side, items more than a metre wide can fit between the wheel housings and you do get some extra space beneath the boot floor to keep valuables away from prying eyes. The fact that you can expect to pay the best part of around £40,000 for this A45 AMG might cause typical hot hatch customers something of a sharp intake of breath. Which is fine with the Mercedes, because this car isn't aimed at a typical hot hatch customer. Such a person should be directed towards the brand's front-driven A250 model, which for around £10,000 less offers 211 brake horsepower, 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.6 .6 seconds, and nearly 150 miles an hour. If that's not enough for you, then it'll probably come as little surprise to hear that the perfection on offer here demands an appropriate premium. Perfection? Is that what's on offer with this Mercedes? Let's consider and start with that price tag. Yes, it's a lot. No, it's not unprecedented. Two similarly performing and comparably targeted cars that are now no longer made, Audi's first generation RS3 and BMW's 1 Series M Coupe, both cost about that much when they were new. And since at the time of the launch of this AMG Merc, neither model had been replaced, this top A-Class was left out on its own in terms of price and performance at the very top of the shopping rocket segment. Yes, I know the red mist mags will tell you that for 20% less you could get a BMW M135i or an Audi S3, but as usual they haven't done their homework. 
It isn't only that these two models have 10 to 15% less power than is on offer here, so sit in a slightly lower niche in the hot hatch segment, or that the Audi is less rewarding and the two-wheel drive BMW less tractable. I'd also point out that if you specify either of those cars with five doors, performance paddle shift auto transmission, and a comparable spec to this Mercedes, their price advantage narrows considerably. So, are there any other comparable shopping rocket options? Not really. Volkswagen's four-wheel drive Golf R with 296 brake horsepower has all the same mechanicals you'll find in an Audi S3, so all the same comments apply. You could save £10,000 or so over the cost of this Mercedes by choosing a 280 brake horsepower Vauxhall Astra um, VXR or a 265 brake horsepower Renault Sport Megane. But then, along with lower levels of performance, you'd have to do without four-wheel drive, five doors, a paddle shift gearbox, and decent residual values. Not tempting. Which, for me, rather leaves this car out on its own as a machine to suit someone who, ideally perhaps, would ordinarily be treating themselves to a performance sports car. Say, a Nissan 370Z, or better still, a Porsche Cayman but with family commitments, now needs something that, though just as fast, is a little more versatile. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an A45 AMG that you really, really want, then you're gonna need to know what the not inconsiderable asking price gets you as standard. Quite a lot, actually. If you do end up comparing this car to lesser hot hatches, Make sure that you're factoring in the benefits of the five-door body style, auto transmission and four-wheel drive system that come fitted here. Along with a kit list that runs to an AMG body kit with front and rear spoilers, side skirts and twin AMG chrome sports exhausts, 18-inch AMG alloy wheels, sports suspension by Xenon auto-functioning headlamps, privacy glass, rain-sensing wipers, sports seats trimmed in leather-like Artico with Dynamica microfiber contrast stitching, automatic climate control, a decent quality six-speaker stereo system with a digital radio and a media interface for USB and iPods Bluetooth phone compatibility, uh, a trip computer operable from the leather-trimmed multifunction sports steering wheel, uh, sports pedals, and lovely illuminated AMG branded door sills. There's also an active park assist with Parktronic system that'll actually locate spaces for you and automatically steer you into them. A decent tally then, and one complete enough to hopefully ensure that you shouldn't have to stray too far into the options list on items that won't pay for themselves at resale time and which don't add much to this car's all-round ownership proposition. Into this category, I'd put all the pricey carbon fiber trim add-ons and, reluctantly, the thumping 11-speaker Harman Kardon surround sound audio system. I'd also single out the frankly ridiculous £2,000 Mercedes wants for a driver's package that gives you a day's AMG track tuition and, with a tweak to the software, raises the maximum speed by 13 miles an hour to 168 miles an hour. No, you need to try and ignore all this tinsel and instead take my advice and try and limit yourself to a couple of must-have items. First, the AMG Performance Exhaust that piles on the oral fireworks you really want in a car like this. And second, the leather and Alcantara trimmed AMG Performance steering wheel that feels great and really lifts the cabin. What should be standard on a car as powerful as this one is extremely high grade safety provision, which to be fair is exactly what you get. As on all A-Class models, the headline feature is what's called Collision Prevention Assist, a system based around a radar at the top of the windscreen that constantly scans the road ahead for potential collision hazards. If one is detected, the driver gets both visual and audible warnings, at the same time as the standard Adaptive Brake Assist system is primed for the most effective braking response as soon as the driver hits the pedal. The system also protects against rear-end collisions at speeds of over 19 miles an hour. In other words, it's very clever. Testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose-to-tail accidents and decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. 
Also fitted as standard is Attention Assist, a clever feature that monitors your driving reactions. To detect drowsiness, it'll respond to by prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. More familiar safety kit includes the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. The latter a two-stage ESP system with an interim sports handling setting that gives you a little more opposite lock leeway. Plus you get ASR acceleration skid control along with ABS brakes that automatically prime themselves in wet weather and increase assistance in emergency stops advertised to following motorists by automatically activating brake lights. Now, if all that's not enough to keep you out of the hedge, there are also seven airbags, including a driver's knee bag, uh, anti-whiplash head restraints, uh, Isofix child seat fastenings, tire pressure monitoring, a deformable steering column, and a pedestrian-friendly bonnet. But, of course, you can go an awful lot further than that with a whole range of safety systems you'd expect would be the preserve of much pricier Mercedes models. These include Distronic Plus Adaptive Cruise Control to keep you a safe distance from the car in front at cruising speeds. Then there's a lane tracking package which gives you blind spot assist to stop you dangerously pulling out to overtake and lane keeping assist to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. Plus, you can specify a screen-mounted camera that pictures speed limit signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. It'd all be nice to have, but personally, if I was going to stretch my budget to include some extra safety features, I'd probably opt for the two fitted to this particular car. First, it has the intelligent light system that can automatically dip its beam against oncoming traffic at night and can vary its beam pattern and lighting to suit the kind of road you're driving on. And this particular A45 also features the clever pre-safe anticipatory system that senses an emergency situation early on before automatically pre-tensioning the seat belts, closing the windows and positioning the power sunroof and electric seats if they've been fitted to provide for optimum crash survival. Of course, just because you've survived a crash doesn't mean you'll be in a position to think clearly and alert the emergency services. But if you found a couple of thousand to specify the command online system with media interface set up that I have here, you won't have to. It'll automatically call for help via your phone, sending the nearest call centre your exact GPS coordinates. The same package includes a larger 7-inch colour tablet screen from which to control via voice or button, an HDD 3D sat-nav system and a 10 gigabyte music library. You also get in-car internet access to Mercedes-Benz online services via which you can access Twitter, Facebook and internet radio. And you can download integrated Mercedes apps for things like Google Local Search and Weather and the option of downloading a route preset on a home computer through Google Maps. Thanks to Mercedes Blue Direct technology, this car's high-performance 2.0-litre engine can claim not only to be the most powerful unit of its kind, but also one of the most efficient. It helps that the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system used is up to 25% lighter than all-wheel drive setups you'll find fitted to some competitive models. And if you click the AMG Drive Unit into C, or Controlled Efficiency Mode, you'll also get the benefit of an Eco Start Stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result of all of this, Mercedes is able to claim the kind of running cost figures that would frankly astound those who used to need to run cars like Mitsubishi Zevo or the Subaru Impreza WRX STI to achieve this level of performance. Those were machines in which you'd be lucky to see 20 miles to the gallon on a good day with a favourable slope and a following wind. An A45 AMG, in contrast, is supposed to be able to manage a combined cycle fuel return of 40.9 miles to the gallon. Now clearly this figure will head south if you use the throttle pedal as intended, but it's hard to argue with the 161 grams per kilometre emission showing. 
Interestingly, these figures are virtually identical to those of less powerful rival cars like Audi's S3 Sport Pack S-Tronic and Volkswagen's Golf R DSG. And we're talking an improvement of around 10% over a rival six-cylinder BMW M135i Auto. This A45 AMG will also be cheaper to run than feebler mainstream hot hatches like Vauxhall's Astra VXR and the Megane Renault Sport 265. Of course, it'll be a bit pricier to insure though. Expect to find it rated a Group 43. What else? Well, residuals will be strong, provided you don't go mad on the options list. Uh, the car I'm driving here has had its price inflated by around 20% by extras that won't add anything like that amount to its value when resale time comes. As you'd expect, the Mercedes aftercare package is comprehensive with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty and a service care package that spreads the cost of routine servicing, guaranteeing the price of parts and labor for up to four services and covering the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluids, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. In the real world, this is probably the fastest car that Mercedes AMG division has ever made. At launch, it was certainly the fastest hot hatch ever made. And the best? That'll depend on your performance priorities. There may be more rewarding shopping rockets, but there aren't any more effective ones. This is automotive evolution happening right before our eyes. The distillation of everything Mercedes knows about performance cars into one small, perfectly formed package. It's all there, the hand-built AMG engine, the manic all-weather performance, the class-leading safety, the uniquely upmarket interior. If you've been longing for an AMG hatch and wondering what the Mercedes of small performance cars might be like, well, this A45 provides a devastatingly effective statement of intent. Worth the wait? You bet.